Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Hello, Glenn Gonzalez. Larry, good to be here. Yes, glad to have you here. And Glenn, uh, we're going to have some fun this afternoon talking about winning and it's something we don't usually get exposed to the uh, uh, private uh, jetting, you know, world, the uh, aircraft and, and flying and all of that, something that you, where you spend your world. And so Glenn is, is it CEO or uh, of Jet It? Are you a founder or CEO? What, what's your role there, Glenn? I am a co-founder and CEO. Co-founder and CEO uh, is 2018, uh, correct on that it, it sure is we uh launched actually tomorrow uh will be our departure from honda aircraft company the and four-year anniversary and uh, received our first airplane in december of 17 so uh, kind of unofficially tomorrow is our four-year anniversary hey congratulations and uh when you started, by the way, is that Honda? There's a Honda factory there in Greensboro, North Carolina. Is that where you uh, came from? It is. That's That was my previous role. Uh, it was a little bit of a, an effort to try to find an entrepreneurship opportunity that didn't present itself. Yeah. Uh, so I left the company and here we are. Uh, both my co-founder and I left on the same day four years ago tomorrow. Well, Glenn, I, uh, <laughs> I lived there for about... 20, I don't know, 20 zillion years in Greensboro, built a financial services business. And then uh, after the business was built and the family raised, I uh, moved down to Palm Beach, Florida, and uh, also in the winter to Aspen, Colorado. So, but I, I'm up in Greensboro all the time. You know, I drove by that, drive by that Honda place quite frequently. And so uh, I know where you're coming from. And uh uh, I'm very, I was always very curious to see what came out of that factory, but I never got a chance to get a tour so I can get some of the inside, uh, scoop now jet it. I've heard about jet it for a long time. Now, when you started, uh, Glenn, how many, uh, what did you start with, you know, yeah, you and your co-founder, but, uh, you know, planes, employees, funding, this, that, the other, what did you start with? Yeah, Larry, we started, uh, just my co-founder and I. Uh, our first hire was someone uh, for client experience. We recognize we're dealing with an audience that needs, um, they, they need to be well taken care of. Um, and then our second hire was a, a, a young intern uh, who was business development and very much uh, kind of supporting our sales efforts. So we needed to sell and we needed to hire new people or at least take care of those people that we sell to. Um, it was just the two of us. We did have an investor behind us um, that investor has, has moved on. Uh, he received a great and handsome return for his time and investment. Um, and we bought an airplane um, 30 days after leaving Honda Aircraft Company, or at least we signed up for it and received it in December of 2018. Uh, so it was just the four of us. Uh, I was the pilot, the CEO, the salesman, uh, the chief bottle washer, if you will. And uh, we, we were off to the races. And it was a small plane, so you didn't have flight attendants, I guess, but. Uh. <laughs> no, no cabin attendants. I, I also, I guess, did some of that as well, uh, reaching yeah. over my shoulder to support uh, whatever needs they had. Yeah, can I get you a Perrier, sir? And, uh, <laughs> but as you, uh, how did it, did it catch on? Was it a slow start? Was it a quick, quick start? I mean, that had to be scary times for you. Yeah, you know, Larry, uh, my co-founder and I, we took our life's earnings uh, and invested it into the business. Um, 401ks just vanquished everything. Uh, so needless to say, uh, it, it was definitely concerning, but at the same time, man, we, we knew this industry inside and out, and we believed in the business model that we created and recognized that it was the only thing that was holding us back was just traction in the marketplace. You know, we started with kind of the mantra that we're going to establish the brand, communicate the service, and then we've got to execute. And so we were doing all of these things at the same time, uh, getting ourselves in front of people. Um, and, and it really wasn't a very much of a, it, it wasn't a slow burn. Uh, we started very quickly. 
Uh, we got the first airplane in hand in December of 18. Um, got it completely sold shortly thereafter. Very appreciative of our, of our initial investor for helping us get that airplane. But after our first two airplanes, those everything's been pre-sold. And that speaks to the, the recognition of what the market was in need of and our ability to provide it as a business model. What was your business model? Yeah, so we are a what we call a hybrid fractional. Uh, fractional in the sense that uh, a number of share owners are buying a piece of the airplane. Um, they're getting all of the benefits of aircraft ownership without having to buy the entire airplane. Uh, there are tax benefits, distinct tax benefits, uh, being able to write off 100% of your investment um, in your share. Uh, there are the lower operating costs, $1,800 an hour for the whole airplane with no reposition costs. That includes fuel, that includes crew. Uh, so the owners get a, a great benefit. Um, and when they're not using the airplane, JETIC gets the benefit of providing uh, an exceptional service to the broader charter marketplace and uh, being able to find something in that charter marketplace uh, comes back to us as a business. So it's a great trade-off between the three. As opposed to, for people who are not familiar with the uh, uh, chartering and the, the way these private, private, like, let's just say, what is it, NetJets or... Uh, what Warren Buffett has and some of these other That's models correct. or marquee or sentient or whatever. Uh, how, how is this opposed to that? Yeah, I, I guess I'll start with explaining it in something that everyone is probably familiar with. We've heard of people who might buy a second home in a vacation spot. Um, most of us though are using a hotel or a resort in the area uh, when we're going on vacation. Um, Jet it like a net jets or a flex jet is a fractional. We're more of that second home. You have a distinct need for it. You want to use it frequently um, versus the hotel user that is just going to visit it every so often, maybe once or twice in a year. That's our charter customer. Uh, so we have both customers. We have both sides of the business uh, that we support and uh, it works very well for us. We're the first to offer it in, in the fashion that we do. What was the, like how much, uh, when you say you took all your life, you, you know, your, all your savings and everything, how much did the two of you put in and uh, uh, what did your investor put in, if you don't mind me? Yeah, combined, uh, we were on the complete opposite side of the business. Typically, uh, there's a saying, if you want to uh, make a million dollars in aviation, you start with a billion. Well, yeah. we, we started with a million sounds like dollars. The horse, sounds like the horse business. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Um, we, we started with just over a million dollars. Um, and uh, our investor, of course, uh, he put in the majority of that. And, um, you know, we, we had a, a great, we've had a great run for the last three years. Um, we are almost to 200 uh, employees in our organization. Uh, with 25 airplanes that we support in North America and one more in Europe. That's uh, run by uh, my co-founder with our sister company, Jet Club. Yeah, I had uh, the, the closest I've seen to this type model is a friend of mine out in LA bought himself a limo and he made a deal with the driver that uh, as long as you're available when I want to go, you can use it the rest of the time. And uh, it worked out great for both of them. And on a smaller scale, is that kind of the idea? It, exactly right, Larry. Uh, as long as the limo is working, or in our case, as long as the airplanes are working, it should work out quite well for us. And it works out well for the guy who, in this case, your friend who bought the limo, or in our case, the fractional share owners who are buying the airplanes. Uh, we should have the ability to get out to and from, get them where they want to go, when they want to go, and uh, the airplane's in our hands the rest of the time. Well, let's talk about how you set it up yourself. You know, you said you ramped up quickly. Uh, that came, I'm sure, because of the advanced planning. You know, you win a war in the early stages, have advancements because you set yourself up for success. And... Uh, Obviously, you had set yourself up for success very quickly. And uh, how did you go about that comes into prospect, you know, to have people to, to go to market and reach. And so how did you I guess you had 
clients that you've flown for, you had friends in the industry, and then friends of friends like that. How did you set yourself up to uh, go out of the gate strong? Yeah, I mean, we, it started with friends, uh, clients, uh, prospective clients, and friends of those clients. Uh, leaning on those relationships, so, so, so critically important. Uh, but it was also a function of, we, were, we designed the business to be prepared for um, time, to, to build that, that time necessary to make those relationships, understanding the lengthy sales cycle. Um, and, and then on top of that, uh, making sure that we executed on what we outlined was necessary to get it done. Um, I, it took the better part of two years to build the business model. Um, and then my co-founder helped me refine it. And here we are now, almost four years later, uh, we've got over 180 customers. Um, it's a very small demographic that communicates with one another. So if you can make them happy, uh, they'll tell their friends. If you can provide the service that you outlined that we knew from our business planning and our modeling was uh, productive and successful uh, and helpful to the customers, then they would buy in. Um, and the end of that is rapid growth. For those of you who are sick and tired of fooling around and are dead serious about wanting to move up fast, I've got something especially for you. I've combined the best insights from over 40 years in business and making $70 million in income and compressed them into a free webinar. That's right, it's a free resource. If you want to find out exactly what the concepts are that I use in coaching million dollar earners, register now at widelonwinning.com. You'll discover the five part framework used by so many to reach their financial, personal, and professional goals. You can find that link in this episode's show notes. And so what is, what happens with your typical client? Do they wind up uh, getting a bigger piece of, uh, you know, get into more planes or uh, get a bigger piece or once they're in, that's pretty much it. You know, cause when you get into, uh, you know, a lot of these hedge funds, and uh, they'll have a project and then they'll let you know, uh, here's what it takes to get into the project. And, uh, you know, we are, we expect to be in three to five years and expect for this to happen, but there's no guarantees. And then, you know, you can get in for sometimes 20,000, hundred, you know, they have units, you know, hundred thousand, 200,000, you know, 500,000 and you buy, Unit, so you get in on it, and then you might decide, you know, you want to get in more uh, uh, next time they roll around. So, do you see that kind of thing happening in your business? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's all about return on investment. Um, what oftentimes happens with our share owners is they buy a smaller share, especially as a new company just getting started. It's still an expense. It's well over. It's over six hundred thousand dollars. Um, and so they're, they're making a big investment in our business in themselves. But when they see the return on that investment and more time with their families, more time and more success for their business, being able to reach a supplier or uh, a customer faster than someone else, um, they immediately start to see the return on that effort. But more so when they get the invoice and they realize, man, I only, I, I flew five times this month and I spent less than $10,000 but I made $250,000 in, in a month's time, that kind of return on investment says, gosh, I need more of this. And so they buy and increase their share size with us. Um, if they're not happy, obviously they, they won't, uh, if you're not seeing a return on that investment with the hedge fund, needless to say, you won't buy up and, and increase your investment. So they, they have the initial investment and then they pay the per hour cost when they actually use the uh, plane, is that it? That's exactly right. And um, the initial investment is a one-time expense over a, a 10 year period. Um, there are some uh, exit points uh, prior to, but um, when you can have that predictability, uh, as well as an hourly rate of uh, less than $2,000 an hour, it, it really is uh, a tremendous investment. Now, do you do distributions throughout the year or uh, how, how does that work? 
We don't. Essentially, we're, we are subsidizing the, the utilization of the owners in exchange for access to the airplanes when they're, they're not using it. So that's why that rate is $1,800 an hour as compared to other companies out there uh, that will use, you know, that'll be upwards of six and $7,000 an hour. What surprised you, uh, you know, your plan, you had your plan, it went well. What surprised you or shocked you or amazed you or what have, what have you learned from, you know, the whole thing about being in a business is until you get in, you don't know what you're getting into. And uh, there's, and especially if you until you own it, you know, it's just like till you fly the plane, you don't know what you're getting into. For example, I, you know, at one point I was going to get a reason I was interested in those Hondas. I was uh, the Honda Jet was at the time, way back then, I was thinking about getting a single engine jet flying to and from Aspen, uh, you know, and get my hours and all of that. And I actually did 140 hours of training right across the runway from uh, the, the, that uh, hangar. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then on my, I did a solo flight over that field and uh, uh, almost got, on landing, I almost got T-boned by 737 who neglected to call the tower and get clearance. And so I had to do a quick arc around and uh, you know, the tower was calling, you know, abort, pull out, put a two seven, blah, blah, blah. So I landed and gave the keys to the instructor who was waiting on the ground and said, you'll never see me again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know? uh, that's aviation for you. Yeah. There are those of us who've been uh, spooked a little bit and there are those who are soon to be spooked uh, by an experience, but it also in some cases keeps us coming back. You know, the, the surprises that uh, that we've experienced, I guess I was very surprised at um, the market's interest in telling our story. Um, it, you know, Harvard writing a case study on the JetIt model, um, the CNBC, and, and just the quick awareness that uh, people were excited to tell the JetIt story. Um, but, but also the other thing that surprised me is how quickly people started to copy what we were doing. Um, I guess they figured, well, if, if those guys can do it, why not me? Um, and and aviation is a, a tough space, and I, I wish them all the best um, because it, it really is a tough industry to be successful in. And I'm, I'm grateful for the amazing talent that we've been able to recruit and uh, grow into our business. So let's talk up to where you are now. We're talking about from 2000, end of 2017, 2018, you got you and your co-founder, you got some seed money, you got a plane. Now, where are you today? Yeah, well, we've, we've covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time. Uh, we have, of course, our aircraft operations. We've got 25 airplanes here in North America. Uh, one of those is in Canada. It is a subsidiary of our US operation. Uh, so we have uh, Jetit USA, Jetit Canada. Uh, we have Jet Club, which is our European arm in, in Europe. Um, run by my co-founder. Uh, and, and then we have, of course, almost 200 people on our staff and payroll. Um, we are uh, high wage uh, paying, so we're, we're excited to share that. We have people in 31 different states, about 25% of our workforce uh, are veterans. Um, we uh, have uh, both maintenance operations, aircraft management and charter operations. Um, as well as brokerage services. So we do everything in the industry and we've uh, covered a lot of ground in a very short period of time. And where is your, uh, where are your headquarters now? You know, we're right in downtown Greensboro. Uh, if you really? really are You didn't go far, with, huh? <laughs> we did not go far. We wanted to stay close to Honda. Uh, the state of North Carolina and Greensboro has been very good to us. So uh, we're, we're excited to continue to grow our business here. Okay, where do you live in town since I know Greensboro? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in the uh, Starmount area. Oh, uh, Starmount. Okay, well done. And uh, I was over in New Irving Park, so <laughs> Page High School. You know, I don't know. You got kids and all of that, but uh, yeah. What a uh, what has it done for you personally? Uh, you know, you seem to be as a pilot needs to be very even keeled. 
checklists, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, they say, why do the pilots have so many checklists? I said, you know, it's a little complicated thing, you know, and you notice if you think of how many planes, one of the big things to come out of 9-11 was when they put up on the screen how many planes, how many jets were actually in the air at that moment, you know, and how many they had to bring down out of the skies, you know, it's just like planes raining down all over the country. But uh, it's a complicated thing. You have to, you know, pilots in the in air, airline industry are uh, 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 role models for the disciplined life and the disciplined approach to things because you can't leave things to chance. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I think, think the tires are good. I think we feel it up. You know, that that doesn't really work. But that was that good or bad for you when you became a CEO? Because CEO is rough and tumble and dealing with surprises and this, that, and the other. I mean, you gotta kind of shift gears, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess maybe my experience as a pilot might be a little different from most. Um, I started flying in the Air Force and flew fighters, uh, so you're always prepared for that next surprise. You're always preparing for the war that starts tomorrow. And um, in that sense, uh, it's yes, we still have checklists. We still have to flow through everything. But once you fence into the airspace, everything after that is dynamic. And there's no set, uh, you know, there, there are standards and operating procedures that you're going to work within. But outside of that, um, you know, you gotta be prepared for anything and everything. And um, you work within those procedures. Being a CEO has been just the same. You know, learning about myself that yes, I am even keeled, uh, but understanding and being prepared for anything and everything, planning for the things that are threats and issues that are known, the threats and issues that are unknown, and then the unknown unknowns, uh, being prepared for those just the same. Uh, you know, I, I've learned to manage those as best as I can. Uh, it's hard. But um, I, I think my experience as a pilot and a fighter pilot has definitely helped with that. Thanks for listening to the Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free Register for it right now at whitealamwinning.com. Thanks for listening.